You just had the first training session in, in, in our stadium, so how was it? It was really nice. It was, uh, we are actually jealous because uh, when we see this stadium and uh, the pitch, this is something that we really need back home in Iceland. So it was uh, a pleasure to see not only the pitch was good, the stadium is really nice. And uh, I had a little walk yesterday around the stadium here and in the park. And it is uh, something that you should be really, really proud of. It's really beautiful. So congratulations. Okay, and you just recently had a trip in the Asia. You played a couple of games there, so talk us through it. How was it? What experience did you gain from that trip? It was a long trip. So we started in uh, Abu Dhabi uh, and we ended in, uh, in Seoul, in South Korea. But it was a good experience because we had a very young and uh, an experienced group there uh, because it was outside of the FIFA dates. Uh, only our captain was there with us uh, for the first five days. So it was a, an in, important uh, experience for our young players who are playing back home in Iceland. We have uh, two good games, first uh, against Saudi Arabia, we're going to the World Cup, and then South Korea, we're going to the World Cup. So it was an important experience for uh, to develop the, our young players, our uh, players uh, back home. And I know this is something that you are doing now here as well in Lithuania with uh, coach uh, Reynold Brue, who has uh, done a fantastic job in, uh, in Luxembourg for uh, 10 years. So I know you are starting uh, on, 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 on your journey with, with those uh, to develop new players, coaches, uh, new environment, football environment in Lithuania. So for us, this trip was really important and it's... Uh, something that we can use for the future. And uh, this is the first time that Iceland is going to take part in the Baltic Cup, so maybe what do you know about this tournament? We, I don't know who won it the most times. I know it's, it's been played for many, many years, almost 100 years, something like this. So it's a, it's a big and a long tradition. Uh, we once had something similar for a few years with the uh, Nordic uh, countries. Uh, I remember when I was playing that we played some uh, Nordic competition, but it's, uh, it's, it's good and it's important, I think, for uh, the neighboring countries to have something like this. And we are actually quite we're happy and, and, and glad that we can participate. And I just said to my players and my team manager, it's when you come to a, a stadium and an uh, environment like this in November, and we can play in a pitch like this, then you should be proud of this competition as well. You also already mentioned some words about our national team coach, Ryan Wilbrew, but what else do you know about the Lithuanian national team, let's say? Just uh, the things that since uh, after the game, of course, in the preparation, you, I watch some games and I, I, I have a look where the players are playing and we have a look at the squad and we uh, saw, of course, the games you were playing in the Nations League uh, last uh, or this year uh, against Turkey and, and Faroe Islands and, uh, and Luxembourg. So uh, this is, of course, something that we know about the team now uh, and uh, like I said before you are starting to develop a new uh, uh, plan strategic plan if I can call it like that and, and, and I hope for you that you will have for example players like Jan Kauskas before uh, that you can create those players who are uh, playing in a big big competitions but we know of course that you have some players abroad now so this is but Individual names, I almost never name individual names before the games. And of course, you had one group of players in your trip in Asia. Now you have a different group of players. How hard is it for you as a coach like, to turn, like, to switch yourself from, from working with one group then to working with other group? Now it's quite easy because this group uh, we have now is, is our, you uh, can call it our A team, our first group. And they have been now with me for... Uh, yeah, one and a half year. So we have also been developing a new team uh, with a new generation with our uh, 
older players who have the experience. Uh, so it's easier now because they know the they know our uh, uh, game plan, they know our uh, philosophy, they know how we want to uh, train, and they know how we want to uh, try to uh, take every game uh, and 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 develop further in our in our uh, with our new new team. So now it was easy. The most difficult thing was getting used to a new time zone. And uh, Iceland is often mentioned as like some sort of an example, like how such a small country can provide so many good players that play in Euros, play in World Cups. So how do you feel about that? That I don't know, positive uh, reactions for about your country? Yeah, that's something we are really, really proud of, of course. We are only almost 400,000 uh, inhabitants in Iceland and we have a lot of uh, professionals. We have a lot of players who have played on a really, really high level. For example, uh, our captain here next to me. So this is something we are really proud of and this is something we are showing now with a new generation that we are... Uh, this is not a fluke. This is not something that we are just lucky with one generation. The next generation is coming. and uh, So this is something we uh, are proud of and that's something that we want to continue to... Uh, for the next coming generations. I know for Aaron, so what do you know about this competition, the Baltic Cup and about the Lithuanian national team? Have you ever, I don't know, played against some Lithuanian guys or? Yeah, uh, like the coach said earlier, it's a, it's a Baltic Cup has a, has a long history. I think uh, right up on, on it, I think it's 1928, it first started. So I think uh, us being invited for the for the first time, uh, it's our, uh, Privilege to be here, and and we know that obviously Lithuania is gonna give us a tough match to tomorrow. Of to, uh, course, it's obviously their competition, and and they want to they want to further uh, and go into the final. So, but but like like the coach said earlier, we've obviously looked at some clips from the, the last few games of of Lithuania, and we are preparing well, uh, focused on ourselves, obviously most most of all, uh, how to better ourselves, because. Like the coach said, we are uh, we're still under a, a process and developing as a as a team. Um, young players, uh, some experienced players coming back. Um, so it, it's the main focus is obviously on ourselves, and we want to we want to uh, uh, keep progressing as as a team, and that's our main aim, uh, especially for tomorrow. But like I said earlier, privileged to be here in in, in this rich history of uh, of a party cup. And for you as a player, how much more fun is it to compete in a, let's say, official tournament, not just an ordinary friendly game? Let's say. Yeah, absolutely. We were saying that earlier. Uh, it's better to have, have something to, to play for than just uh, a pointless friendly or, or, or whatever you can say. I know the coach will not agree, but there's never been a, a pointless uh, friendly for, for a coaching point of view. Because you're always trying something different. You're, you're trying new things, new players, etc. Uh, but being in a competition like this, is, it gives uh, the game more more uh, edge edge to it, and and it will be it will be a good game tomorrow. And you yourself just reached quite a milestone, playing 100 games for the national team. First of all, how does it feel to reach this milestone? And second, do you have any plans to catch up with Birker Bjarnason, who is now, I guess, the leader with the games played? Yeah. No, I mean, <clears throat> I've I've not thought obviously. Like I said, after the, the Saudi game, I'm proud of reaching that milestone, and um, it's not an every 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 uh, day that players reach 100 for for uh, their respective countries. So, obviously, really proud of of getting the 100 games um, and many more to come, obviously, and uh, uh, but proud of it and focused on 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 the future, better the team. I'm here to obviously give my experience out to the younger players who are coming through. Um, in my opinion, uh, we, we, they need it, and uh, for for my experience to to spread out, and, and I'm happy to to do so. And and um, and what was the the other question? Are you planning to catch? With oh, your catch company? with Birkir? No, I'm, I'm not in the competition with Birkir. Uh, um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, we've had some great times together, so it's not about uh, competing with him. No, no not at all.
And one final question for the, both the coach and the players. So the World Cup is upon us. What would maybe maybe be your predictions for the favorites, for the dark horses, let's say, of the tournament? I've always said Brazil. Um, and a little bit of Spain as well. I, I'm not sure. Um, but then you have Messi, who is probably his final tournament. So it's probably a, a lot of teams that I'm thinking about at the moment. But for me, the Brazil was probably the strongest squad uh, in the World Cup at, at the moment. And for the coach? Yeah, I'm really bad in predict uh, predictions. So, uh, but when 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 I was young, I had the same. Like uh, Aaron says, Brazil was always the when I in uh, yeah 82, 86. Brazilian squad is always fantastic. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I think it's also I think the most important thing now. It's 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 been playing in. In Qatar, so uh, a lot of times when it's outside of Europe, the European sides uh, have a little bit more difficulties in winning. So I'll go for Brazil as well. I'll, uh, my captain is always right. 